Hey everybody, I'm Ashley Graham, and this is Pretty Big Deal. Ah! We're gonna be talking beauty, business, culture, and owning who you are. And as always, we want you guys to be a part of the conversation. So go on over to Instagram and Twitter at Pretty Big Deal. Talk to us, share what you're going through. And go on to the Anchor app. It's so easy, just go download it, leave me a little voicemail, and after the show, I'm gonna be talking to you about everything you're talking to me about. And I also wanna say, what's up to my friend, my assistant, my better half, Darcy Linda, for joining us. Hola, gracias. How are you doing, Darcy? So good. All right, guys, we have got an Olympian in the house. That's right, I said Olympian. She is a history-making skier, advocate for young women, and a self-proclaimed super dork, which is another reason I love her so much. We've got Lindsay Vaughn in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, guys. Wait, so where did you get the super dork? Have you just always been a dork? Uh, well, I think it started with a... Uh perm and bangs and braces together. <laughs> oh you had a middle perm? school. Oh no, it's real bad. Middle school yeah. days. Poor choices. You didn't Poor have a choices. perm. Yours looks like it's a perm right now. Oh. oh you see, do you hear her? <laughs> braces and braces. It's okay. proud. That's how we roll. Handle it. <laughs> Wait, so you just, you, did your sisters have? Perms? No, I was the only one that Ooh. had a perm. And then, you know, the big thing of the, like, huge bangs was in. So I got my dad's nose clippers oh. and I I cut my bangs and then they were too short so I couldn't actually do the big bang and it was like a short oh, no. bang it was so tragic have you seen that meme where that girl goes all I wanted was effing bangs <laughs> and they're like up to here I did not see that uh, well, I'll, I'll DM I it to you under a rock we were both in Sports Illustrated together yeah. but you were you naked you were naked yeah, but and you were on the cover but you were crushing your body. it thank you thank like, you uh, <laughs> Yes, I actually call that pose the Emily D. Donato because the night before I was like, "How am I gonna pose?" And like, I want to still be looking sexy practice? and juicy. You practice? Yes, and girl, you. I practiced. Hell yeah! Is it like the secret? Do I need to like? That's what I do with every shoot. I, I look in the mirror and I like change the angles of my face, and it's just like smolder. Yeah, but okay. So what but position were you in when they had to paint your whole body? I was passed out on my back, like on a table. Like a like a normal like dining room table passed out. They like put my prop my head up because I we started, I flew like some crazy amount of time like twelve hours to this a random island. I was like, why don't you give like a nice <laughs> island that's like close and like my warm water and like uh, yeah, look all the water like, looks why? the same. Come on, <laughs> I had three flights and a boat. <laughs> <laughs> I get there, I have. Food and then literally at 11 p.m. was my call time. 11 p.m. No, it was a PM, night shoot. 11 p.m. No, no, I just that was when the painting started. <gasps> so I lay down on this dining room table, which was clearly not comfortable. They like propped my legs up so I didn't like move, and I fell asleep. And they painted me, and then I had Wait, to like. Wait, you had no panties on, right? Clearly not. <laughs> Nothing. Oh, my. a little bit of. Tight. I had three women painting me, and then like after I don't know, it was like ten in the morning or something. I like you slept on the dining room like, table. I had to like bend over, and they're like doing my butt, and it was what? slightly awkward. So um, my issue with that is that like these girls are big and saggy. Yeah, I don't and have I those, have so I don't be, have that problem. I'd have to be like this, and then my positions would only be like this, just. I mean, it might, it might like fold the paint. It might the paint, fold. The paint might. It would be terrifying. <laughs> it would be like, oops, sorry. You know what? I really don't feel bad there. for you on that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can, don't feel bad. I know. You have like what we like to call like the couture boobs. It's like you can fit into couture as long as you want. Yeah, except see, I have the couture boobs, but not the couture ass. So it doesn't really <laughs> work. I still don't fit in anything couture, okay? <laughs> well, what size are you? What are your hips? I'm like... Like six to eight, it okay. depends because I fluctuate a lot. You know, when I when I'm getting ready for ski season, I'm probably like a good fifteen pounds heavier really? than what I am. Weight. Wow. Yeah, it's just like I mean, I work out all summer and I gain and gain and gain, and then when I start competing, I lose, lose, lose because there's so much stress and I can't work out as much as I normally do in the summer. Right. Um, and I constantly am trying to keep the weight on because I need it for skiing. My God! But yeah, in the spring I am like I you know I take a month off, not off off, but I stop lifting as much, and then I just it all comes off. But quickly. you don't have to be a certain size. It's just more about the strength and ability. Yeah, ability. it's kind of like you want to be big because that's gravity. You right. know, mm. it, it helps. Right. But if you can't move the weight, then 
it's mm. counterproductive. It's like being on a zip line. The bigger you are, like the faster you're going to oh go, and the smaller you are, you're going to get stuck in the middle. That is in theory, yeah. 100%. Yep. No, I did the zip line, right? And I looked at that Justin. That is gravity, another form. Yep. I looked at Justin. I was like, this is the best time to be a big girl. It's because oh, I'm going to sure. zip, zip down oh, this yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. Because I saw yes. the girl in front of me get stuck. Yeah, you don't want to be lightweight on that one. No. No. Um, okay, so for all the people out there, well, just those two people out there who don't know, um, Lindsay is one of the greatest downhill skiers of the world, and she's one of the most decorated skiers as well. I mean, the list is long, but we're going to talk about it because it's phenomenal. You've had so much dedication and drive, and I really want to get into the heart and meat of like how it all began and and what inspired you to start skiing. Um, well, my dad was a skier, and he was injured when he was like 18, mm -hmm. and so I kind of... I was, he was living vicariously through me. <laughs> um, but I, I just, I love skiing. You know, I always loved it. I was terrible at every other sport I tried. Soccer, scored for the wrong team. <laughs> Gymnastics, too tall. Figure skating. My dad's like, what are we doing putting her in figure skating? She's <laughs> horrible. Um, Thanks, Dad. Yeah, you know, very encouraging. Um, so, but yeah, I, I love ski racing. I started racing when I was seven. And then I met my idol, Peekaboo Street, when I was nine. Okay. And she was like my superhero and she is basically the reason why I wanted to be an Olympian because I wanted to be just like her. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's my shtick. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and you've got four World Cup overall champions. Yep. You've got yep. eight World Cup season titles and not one, two, but three Olympic medals. Um, I mean, those are just some like sexy statement necklaces. <laughs> Like, hey guys, these are where, my four world championship gloves. Where are you care where do those all live right now? In Colorado, in okay. my house. Yeah. I um I had to build like because they're really beautiful, like crystal trophies and oh. I, so I had to build something special. So I had this nice little um trophy case made above my fireplace and they're all lit up and and I brag about them and You, you know, should, so, I would. So I'd nice. be like, Would you like to see all the trophies? <laughs> um so I can't I mean, I never had this much dedication growing up. My mom and dad were always like, what do you want to do? What do you want to be? And I just kind of did everything. And then this kind of just fell into my lap. But I want to know what was the dedication that you had, like the deep down. I mean, it wasn't just like your dad being like, go do this. Like no. you had to have something in you that was fighting to keep going. Yeah, it's it's weird. I kind of, I think it was a combination of being passionate about ski racing and loving it so much. That's why I was always out on the hill first and I left last. But I mean, you know, I, I think because I wanted to win, that's what has really driven me over the years. You know, I, I love competing. I love pushing myself. Ski racing is an interesting sport because it's not judged. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, there are no limitations. Like you can push yourself as hard or as little as you want. And I like that freedom and mm -hmm. I like that feeling and the adrenaline and, I definitely am an adrenaline junkie, so you know that is another part of it. But so is Ashley, <laughs> just a little bit. That's why we like each other. Yeah, <laughs> well, we are from the Midwest, so you know. Midwest. Right. Oh yeah. But when was it that you were like, I'm going to be a pro athlete? I'm going to be a pro skier. Is this like, did you make a vision board, or is it just <clears throat> like when I was nine? When I met when I met my idol, I was like, this is what I want to do. Nine. Yeah. What? You gotta, you know, dream big, man. And then, oh but then when God. I was, but then when I was like ten or no, eleven or twelve, my dad and I sat down and made this like ten year plan oh, of like, what? yeah, because I was like, how do I get to the Olympics? Like, what do I need to do? And he's like, okay, we'll work from here and we'll work backwards. You have to win at this level and then this level and this oh, level. Wow, and yeah. so to get there, we need to start training with these people and you need this experience. And but let's talk about the Olympics. Okay. And let's just like, I don't. You tell me. <laughs> I hear it from I'll you. tell you. You started, you started at 17. 17. So 17 was my Were first Were your friends Olympics. like, oh my God? Like I said, I didn't have any friends. Like right. I don't know if you, like super dork, you know? I had like my three friends. That's really all I had. In, um, in 2010, you got your, you won their first gold. Yeah. I mean, what was that success like? Um, that was a big moment for me because I'd won at every other level in ski racing and that was kind of the last thing and everyone was, you know, and talking trash, like, you know, I haven't won the Olympics, and it's like, well, I've been hurt, you know, I was young, and right. so it's finally like, okay, shut up now. You proved it. I proved it. Yes. I did it. 
and now it's you know it's something that I've accomplished that no one can ever take away from me. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that was a really good feeling, and I I won the bronze in that Olympics as well, and then things just kind of changed for me after that. You know, because no one knows ski racing in the U.S. Right. So when I won the Olympics, it was like a big deal. I'm like, well, I've been winning for a long time, but <laughs> you're like, I've been welcome here already, to the club. People. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it just changed things. You know. I got to go to parties with you, and I know. I was like, whoa. <laughs> so your family has been a part of this whole journey with you, and have they been? What have they meant to you throughout this? I mean, my family is my backbone. You know, I'm one of five, the oldest. I kind of always been like the captain of the ship, and I always felt so supported by them. Even though my family moved to Colorado so that I could ski, they uprooted their lives. You know, it's kind of my my parents always tried to give everyone the same opportunity, but at the same time, it was clearly, I was the one that was gonna be the athlete and right. you know, my family put everything into me and my, my siblings have never been you know, angry or jealous or you know, they've always just supported me 110%. And when I've had all my injuries, my family supports me like no one else. I mean, my sister, she lived with me and took care of me and bathed me and- <laughs> put my clothes on and gave me my medicine. And I mean, at that time, you know, bagel and cream cheese was like, that was like an A plus for her. Now she's, you know, very cultured and can make a lot of other (laughs) dishes. But at the time, you know, bagel and cream cheese, I was on that diet for, Oh my God. Yeah. I can't, I can't say it. No, because I was just sitting there. So I was like, all my muscles just withered away. I was like a stick figure. But that's why you bring her to all the cool parties now as a thank you. Yeah, but she doesn't really like the parties. Uh, I, I, I'll be completely honest. I don't really like the parties either. Well, uh, but then I hang out with people like you. No, and but then, fun, exactly. But like, you're not at every party that I go to. So, like, I think we just need to coordinate. Yes. I'll be on the know. same because schedule. We like to dance. Yeah. We don't like to stay long. We're mid- cool Midwesterners. I'm not a huge, huge drinker, and neither no, are you. No, I'm pretty lightweight. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like two in, and I'm like, we need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a situation. <laughs> um, I want to talk about your foundation, because how freaking incredible that you you created a foundation for young girls who are to feel more confident. Yeah. Um, is there sports related in no, this as well? No, it's really nothing to do with sports, okay. but we do a lot of stuff. And we have like weekend camps, empowerment camps, mm-hmm. we call them strong girls camps. Mm-hmm. Um, and we mix kind of a curriculum where it teaches them about positive body image and, um, you know, meaningful friendships and cyberbullying. We mix in that with other kind of active activities like not really sports but Mm -hmm. we kind of make sure they're they understand what it means to be healthy from all angles from you know mental side to physical side but um yeah that was actually one of the best things that's come out of my injuries is that I actually had a ton of time to create a foundation and it's called the Lindsay Vaughn Foundation yeah it's very unique name I don't know if (laughs) have you ever heard you wouldn't have guessed that (laughs) But that's it. <laughs> Wait, so how long have you and uh, PK Subban been together? <laughs> um, almost a year. Ooh! Yes, fire. Yeah. How'd you guys meet? Come on, I want some juice. Give me oh, some juice. It's, it's a really interesting story. I wish he was here to tell it. Um, PK, where are you at? He, oh, there he is. No, I'm just kidding. What? Can you imagine? <laughs> and he's, he's in LA. I know he's not here because he's reporting for camp right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. No, it it was an it was interesting because uh, the first time I ever I had no idea who he was. I didn't know he played hockey. I don't follow hockey, and I don't uh, either. at the SP, yeah, I mean, I don't follow. Yeah, whatever. And Sorry, PK. I'm, <laughs> he knows that I've told him that many times. <laughs> um, like, I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. But you're nice. You're a big deal, I guess. But, you know, you just look Is really he a cute. big deal in the hockey world? Yeah, he's a really big deal. Oh, snap. Yeah. Okay. Good yeah. to know. He's like the best defenseman in the league. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so how'd you guys meet? Where were you? So we were at the ESPYs last year. Uh-huh. And I was, at the time, dating somebody. And he saw me and then gave this interview on live television saying that it's hot outside, but not as hot as Lindsey Vaughn. Whoa. Oh yeah. And I was like, who is this guy? I'm like, this guy has some nerve. And my boyfriend's like, who is this guy? I'm like, (sighs) like, I don't know who this guy is. And then did you remember meeting him or no, you didn't even meet him. You just, he just saw you. Yeah. And then, but then I got introduced to him later that day and turns out my, one of my good friends is his agent. Uh And 
I was like, you need to keep a lid on him. Like, figure it out. Like, <laughs> you know. And I saw him at a couple other events. My sister talked to him for a while. My sister really liked him. And I was like, God, this guy is, you know, like, so arrogant. Like, who is this guy? And my sister's <laughs> like, no, he's really nice. Like, you should talk to him. Like, why? You're like, he's been blasting I'm my like, name all no. over the news. So, like, anyways, I didn't really pay much attention. And then when I was single, he reached out to me. And I was like, Karen, you'll never guess who, like, texted me. And she's like, I told you he's really nice. I'm like, I don't know. But we talked for, you know, a few months. And you were he talking turns out or you were dating? No, we were talking. Okay. And then we met. He came to visit me on uh, Christmas Day. Oh, that's dedication. Yeah. He definitely made a big move there and uh, worked out. It was a big move. It was a big move. A and big he, night. he went in straight into the lion's den, met my family, whole Whoa. family. Woo! That's a confident man. Yeah. That's aggressive. It's, what are your non negotiables for like for dating? What are your non negotiables in, in a man? You have to be at least six foot to feet tall. Like, okay. That's I need to wear heels. Like it's Okay. Um be nice. I don't, I don't know. You don't have non negotiables? No, yeah. I just I mean it's like, you know, if but you're there's so nice many men out there. And, but You're I, just gonna date any nice guy? No, here's the thing: I don't meet people. Like I'm, I'm like either I'm at an event with you and your husband, <laughs> right. or and if he had any hot friends, so I'd hook you up. Yeah, but. exactly. Or I'm at home with my three dogs, like feeding them one bite of mine, one to them. You know, right. like I'm, <laughs> I'm a nerd that's like at home most of the time, but happen to like go to fun events sometimes. Right. So I don't like. Where am I gonna meet? Like you're gonna meet them at the ESPYS, right? So, of course, you're only going to date an athlete. I mean, that's the only people that I'm around. So, what is it like dating an athlete? It's awesome. I mean, it's not I mean, your first time. Well, it's like, you know, I have a hard time relating to, like, an accountant. Right. Well, I would, too. It's like I'm, like... Uh, if, if I dated an accountant, I'd be like, okay, get to work. And then we like would probably crunch never the numbers. have numbers. <laughs> that would be, like, terrible. I'd be like, I'm sorry, you're too busy working on the numbers. <sighs> yeah. That would not, be the priority. Yeah. I mean... I think I guess one my, one non-negotiable is that I'd ha they'd have to be athletic or at least like working out or you know being healthy and fit. Yeah, that's probably mm -hmm. the only thing because it's like that's my job. That's what I do every single day, and that's why I think I relate well to athletes because right. you know we're constantly working on our bodies. Like injuries, you know, pressure, media, sponsors. You know, there's always people pulling at you from every different direction and it's hard if you can't understand that lifestyle mm -hmm. or lean on someone yeah does pk keep up with you in the workouts he's he's got a lot of energy he's very <laughs> uh motivated he seems like it on your insta stories he's like uh, popping in and you're like rolling your eyes <laughs> i do roll my eyes a lot he's <laughs> He's got a lot of energy. He like, you know, we we both wake up early and we're we're at the gym by probably six thirty. But I mean, he's like, he doesn't need a nap. I'm like, I need a nap, mm -hmm. you know, after mm -hmm. my first workout. He just like goes straight into a second workout. I'm like, who are you? So it's been a year. Do you see a future happening? Yeah, I mean, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ask him. Yeah, it's like, you know, this is my shark. shark. Oh, <laughs> what is this? This is on my ring finger. And yeah. so sharks um, can only go forwards. So they can't go backwards or they die. And they go after what they want. So if you want to put a ring on it, you got to be going in the same direction. And you got to be helping me go in the direction that I need to go in. That Say is beautiful. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, that, that thing's not getting covered up. So every time PK looks at it, it's like a little bit of pressure. Yes, it is. You don't have to think about it. I already know it is. Okay. Um, I want to wrap this up with a little rapid fire question. Rapid fire. So this is the pretty big deal set. You're yes. a pretty big deal. So I'm going to ask You're you. You're a pretty big deal. I'm going to ask you a couple pretty big deal things in your life. Okay. So you just finished a sentence. Okay. Ready? I think so. Pretty big phobia. Germs, planes, toilets on planes. Oh, really? That's I can go gross. anywhere. I just have to put toilet paper down. <laughs> Uh, I don't, pretty big. You just don't sit. Oh no, I can't hover. No, don't sit. You can't no, 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 hover. No, no, no. because no, I like to do no, kegels you... in between my peas. Oh, so okay. it's like just to keep it strong. <laughs> I'm like pee kegel, pee <laughs> kegel. You could just do that. But this thing when, is going to be not tight like, well. a what? Uh, what? Toy, like a tiger. Like a Just do more doing? squats. Uh, yeah. Kegels while you're squatting. Oh, that takes a lot of 
Okay. All right. <laughs> Two for. Pretty big language. German. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's all I got. <laughs> I thought you were going to Guten say Morgen. Oh, See? No. Das German. is good. That makes sense. That's way more than most people can do. She's German also. Nein, scheiße. She's it's fine. I just said no shit. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, pretty big hype song. Oh, dude, there's too many. I don't know. Just like, give me a tune. Rap. 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 I like rap. I like rap. Okay. <laughs> uh, pretty big mountain. Uh, vale, Colorado. My Hell. home. I love Vale. Uh, pretty big recommendation. Anything. Any any kind Frozen of. Frozen yogurt. Oh, really? You eat dairy? I mean, I'm from Minnesota. Uh, I yeah. used to drink milk by the gallon. I did too. Oh, but now, Midwest. I literally have the shits. <laughs> uh, pretty big motto? Uh, Carpe diem. Pretty big pups. I have three pups. Two, three? Actually, two are pretty big. One is pretty small. Oh. What kind of media. dogs are they? Um, the two big ones are rescues. One's a boxer... American Staffordshire Terrier, and one is a Chow Retriever, and then the little princess is a King Charles. Oh, I'm coming over. I'm going to come over. You should. Do you cook? (laughs) Does PK cook? (laughs) You know, he claims he does. I have yet to witness that. Justin is a phenomenal cook. (sighs) Can you just stop rubbing in? Like, what the hell? (laughs) Okay, I want to know what's going on next for you, because I heard a little birdie told me you've got a YouTube channel coming out. Your little birdie might be right. So, um, what's the YouTube channel going to be about? Um, I've got a lot of stuff. Like my my life is weird, you know. Like I have my skiing. I have you know our cool events that we do together. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be kind of a mix of my life and my experiences, um, fashion. You know, my travels, my crazy psycho family. So it's kind of like a reality show, but on a YouTube channel Correct. controlled by you. Controlled oh. by me. I like that. Cool. And it's my coming family out might not know that I'm actually recording them. So oh. I have some really great ideas. Like nanny cams? Yeah, it's going to be great. That's, oh, my sister would literally come and stab me. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, it's going to be great. <gasps> okay. I see my dad's never going to watch this. Oh, good. So that I think you it's know. fine. He doesn't have internet, does he? He can barely use his phone. He's like, <laughs> that's the kind of that's the perfect kind of dad. Text to have. me back. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, is there anything that we need to know about you that we haven't heard yet out of your beautiful mouth? You know, I don't know. I, I wear a retainer at night. So I bite. Do I. I bite my nails. You do. You know, I kind of starfish at night as well. Like I'm a. I'm a I hog the covers. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, there's a lot of stuff people don't know about me. We're Most of the stuff out. I probably shouldn't repeat, and I probably should have never told you that I wear a retainer, but, you know, it's fine. I wear a night guard and an Invisalign. She's so cute. Wow. Sexy. When Justin hears so it go sexy. in. When Justin hears it go in. Hey, Justin. He knows it's not time to get down. <laughs> Let me just say. Babe, take out retainers so we can have sex now. We have had sex with the retainer oh, in once. No. Because I didn't tell him. <laughs> I told him after. He was disgusted. <laughs> he was disgusted. Great. And oh, just a germaphobe. It's actually making it on the show. It will. It will make it on. <laughs> okay, Lindsay, thank you so much for being <laughs> here. You. I really appreciate it. Darcy Linda. Hasta luego. And don't forget to hop on over to Pretty Big Deal on Twitter and Instagram. We want to hear from you. Go to that Anchor app. Leave me a little voicemail. I'll be talking to you after the show. So. Hola, as Darcel would say. Uh, I'm Ashley Graham. This is my podcast, Pretty Big Deal. I love you, and remember, you are bold. You are brilliant. You are beautiful. Hasta la vega. <laughs>